April 22 was a big day. Forecasters were expecting a tornado outbreak from Colorado down through Kansas into the Texas Panhandle. I originally targeted the Childress, Texas area, but went north to I-40 after storms initiated near Clarendon, Texas. This storm was a cyclical supercell, and you can see the first tornado developing on the left side of the screen. This tornado did not fully condense, but chasers who were close to confirm that there was a circulation at the ground. The tornado roped out fairly quickly and the second tornado developed on the new mesocyclone to the north. This tornado did fully condense and looked quite a bit stronger than the first. There was also a brief rope funnel to the right of the tornado. In textbook cyclical supercell fashion, after the circulation occluded, a new one started to form to the northeast, which you can see as a lowered portion of the storm on the right side of the screen. I kept moving to keep up with this part of the storm. Heading east now on I-40, you can see this part of the storm better. I'm back in the cap rock now, so roads were a lot more sparse and snaked through a bunch of canyons. I had to go east several miles before I had a good north road to keep up with the storm. Meanwhile, on a supercell to the south, a very photogenic tornado near Goodnight, Texas was underway. There's the base of the storm again about a half an hour later. You can see that it's transitioned into a high precipitation supercell. The storm was done producing high contrast tornadoes, but it still had some nice looking structure and strong rotation. Meanwhile, a supercell to the south had a history of producing tornadoes, and the storm I was currently on was starting to deteriorate. I headed back down south to where I was earlier to intercept the second storm. You can see the base and the wall clouds starting to come into view here. There's a bunch of semis parked under the overpass, foolishly following that myth that this is a safe place to take shelter. Nice tail cloud starting to form on the right side of that wall cloud now. The next exit off the interstate took me further west than I wanted to go, so I wound up driving right underneath the wall cloud. This is a rather dangerous maneuver, but luckily the storm did not produce any tornadoes at this time. Heading back east to get out from underneath the wall cloud, I stopped to let it pass to my northeast before moving again to keep up with it. This storm looked like it also was transitioning into a high precipitation mode, and I was worried that my chase was over in terms of spotting tornadoes. It was the only storm in the immediate area, so I kept up with it, however. Ahead of the storm, I turned north on the same road that I was on earlier. I was able to get a better view of what was going on underneath. You can see a classic wall cloud forming here, and there was actually a brief tornado to the left of it on the very edge of the screen. You can see the condensation funnel if you look closely, but it's hard to make out in the time lapse video here. I was heading to the same spot I stopped earlier, knowing I'd have a great view from a high vantage point. Another tornado dropped from the wall cloud, and I quickly realized that this storm would not pass to my northeast that I would get cored and possibly run over by the tornado if I stayed here. So I raced south trying to beat the core before it crossed my path. As I get close to the rear flanking core, you'll see a multi-vortex tornado with several suction vortices. Each one looks like a separate tornado, but they are all orbiting inside the same circulation. I beat the bulk of the core before it crossed my path, just clipping the outer edge of it. There was a whole line of chasers behind me and some of them lost glass due to large hail that was in the core. I went east again on I-40 to move ahead of the storm, but at this point the storm was becoming massively high precipitation. So I decided to call it a chase and start heading east for the next day's target, Nebraska. 